Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. We have Shannon Freeman, and she is an amazing individual with a lot of hats, and today especially, we're going to talk about burnout, something that we all deal with at one point of our life, sometimes a lot, and sometimes we get stuck in it, and sometimes we have symptoms, and we just don't even realize that we're falling into it, but anyone that goes through burnout knows that it could change your entire life, it can change your health. It could really destroy you if you don't catch it in time and you don't learn how to cope with it. So today, Shannon's here. We're going to talk about burnout and we're going to talk about a lot of different ways to help yourself, improve yourself and move on to different levels in life where you could elevate and be happy with the person you are. So Shannon, tell us about yourself and what you do. Thanks, Stacey. Um, I am a holistic practitioner and energetic coach, um, and I specialize uh, working with women who are suffering from corporate burnout, um, and we work with um, holistic uh, practices to ensure their success and just create a more powerful presence. You know, I, I feel it's so important, especially in the world that we live in, in, in corporate world, especially, there's so much pressure that's put on you. And it's, it's, you know, I remember when I was in the corporate world, it was constant pressure from the moment I got on the bus to the moment I got into the city, you know, it was just, and then knowing what was ahead, I was always like, you know, I felt that inner stress, you know, inner stress, and it was very hard to deal with. And then you have responsibilities and you have expectations put on you. And it, also being a woman, sometimes you have to, you feel like you, there's a need to prove you know, yourself. And, you know, it, it's a lot of, a lot that goes on. And sometimes you don't even realize, but all the energy, all the time, everything you're putting in, you're forgetting about yourself. You're forgetting about, you exactly. know, you know self-love, self-care, and all you're focusing on is the things you got to get done for everybody else but you. And then slowly, it you know, burnout starts to creep up on us. And sometimes we don't even realize it. Now, do you find a lot of times women, you know, have burnout and they don't even realize that that they're having the symptoms and all of a sudden they just crash and, and things yeah, like that. definitely. I think, um, to being in the corporate world, um, we really nail our success on these kind of material markers. Um, and so we are buying the purses, we're buying the clothes, we're going to the spa days. And it's almost like we're filling up this cup, this cup that just is full of holes because these are not things that define us. It's not things that actually genuinely um, fill us at a soul level. Yeah. And so I think sometimes you're so inundated with like trying to, um, look at these material markers that you f forget to just kind of, you know, water the grass that's underneath you. You think that it's greener on the other side always. Yeah. Um, and then usually, I mean, before you know it, and at least in my experience, you're completely exhausted. You can't get out of bed. Um, you know, you might check out for a couple of days and kind of like re up yourself. And so you go through these cycles of like burnout and brilliance and you're really killing it at your career, you're kicking butt. And then it turns around and it kicks your butt right back. Um, and then you don't even notice that it's a cycle. A lot of us just think that that sign of burnout is a form of success. Like, look at me, for me, it was like, oh no, I'm exhausted. I can't get out of bed. It's because I've been working, you know, 15 and 16 hour days for the last two weeks and juggling being a single mom. Yeah. Um, and for me, I wore it almost like a badge of honor. Yeah. I, I, I think that's for most women too. And I, I know when I was in the corporate world, you know, I, I had my, you know, my visions of, you know, getting my Louis Vuitton bags again, getting my martinis on a Friday night and getting right. a nice pair of shoes. And, and, you know, it was all about materialistic things. And then, you know, life just took a total turn on me and, you know, it took me in a totally different direction, but, you know, the corporate world is a real backstabbing, you know, industry and there's a lot of pressure and it's not about the materialistic things you know but people get it's very easy to get caught up into it because everyone around you in your environment is doing it and so it becomes the norm I think yeah and for me too because I always worked um in the construction industry so it's really a male dominated industry um and women don't operate the same way that men do yeah um and so almost it's kind of like this need to like fight for approval and you want to you know outshine every other man that's in that office yeah um, 
you know, and then too, I think when you add kids to that as a woman, I don't want to be judged that I have to stay at home because my child's sick, especially as a single mother. Um, so it's, you know, for me to ask for help almost seemed like I was stepping backwards. Um, and we're meant to ask for help. We're meant to, you know, live together. We used to live in like tribal systems and now we're all kind of independent. But, um, for me, it was like, I need to do everything on my own. I don't need any help. I'm an independent woman. Um, and, and that's like literally just adding gas to this tiny little spark that like quickly, I think just turns into an inferno. I kind of felt the same way. Like I felt, I, I hated asking for help. I felt yeah. like an independent woman and I, it killed me. Anytime I had to ask for help, I just, it, it I was just, I, I was mortified because it was like, I wanted to do everything myself and to have to ask someone else. It was, it did feel like a step down. And I, I'm sure a lot of women out there have that, that feeling where, you know, it's, it's, you know, that they feel like it, they're moving backwards instead of forward when they ask for help. But in, re- in reality, I think we all need help, for, you know, and that's how we grow. What do you yeah. think? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And I think um, really it wasn't, it wasn't until I met my husband um, <laughs> and we're, and so I had back surgery um, for a fracture that had occurred in high school. Um, and it really wasn't until I was forced into a position where I had to ask for help. Like I couldn't walk. Yeah. I had like a walker, I had a cane. It was a bedazzled cane, um, <laughs> but I just, I couldn't move. I couldn't take yeah. my kids to practice and he stepped up. And to be honest, I don't know if without that surgery, if I would have ever like humbled myself and, you know, even in this loving relationship, this partnership, I still really struggled. Um, But I think too, as women, and especially in a career, we are taught like we need to manage it all. Like the women have it all. You make a choice to work and you're killing it and you're thriving in your career. Um, but you know, you made the choice to have a baby. So that kind of comes second, right? And like mm-hmm. we should put our career first because that's where our priorities lie. That's how we, you know, pay the bills. Um, and so it just it it I think the cycle of that is something that no one really talks about because we just assume that we should do it all. We don't need to ask for help. Um, You're not being, you know, capable of time management and you're not managing your career. You obviously can't do both if you ask for help and it's not about that. But then now I ask for help. Like I'm, I love being able to include other people. I love that my kids can see that like, no, you can depend on other people. Um, And I think too, also, you know, having the upbringing that I did, Um, just being taught at a very early age that I had to depend on myself. I can't ask anybody for help because it'll fall through. Um, And I think that's also something that probably a lot of women deal with um, that's unspoken as well. Yeah, I I agree totally with you. You know, I think a lot of women feel like they they have the need to do it all, you know, and and they they try to be a, a wife and they try to be, you know, this career person. And they, if they have kids, they're trying to be a mother. And it, you, you really just like a career or even a business, you can't focus in and do all these things all by yourself. It's virtually impossible. Either yeah. you end up burning yourself out or you end up slacking in certain areas. And yeah. who's going to suffer? Is your husband going to suffer? Is your partner going to suffer? Are your children going to suffer? Is your job going to suffer? But somebody, you know, you can't do it all. It's it's virtually impossible, I think. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Now, do you feel like, what are some of the things that you suggest when for women? So they avoid burnout when they have a corporate job or when they're working, or even as a mother, you know, that will, that person who wears a lot of hats, what are some of the things that people should look out for? And maybe some things that people should do so they don't fall into that cycle of burnout. Yeah, I think, um, you know, for me, I noticed a significant change when it was, you know, like five o'clock, five o'clock in the afternoon. And I was slamming the five hour because I needed to cook the five course meal for my kids. And I needed to still get to the gym. And I still had emails that I had to answer. Um, but also really leaning into that rest, you know what I mean? Like yeah. now I, I carve out sacred time and, you know, regardless of what, not every person's into skincare, I wasn't really into it either, but like, just to take the time to take off my makeup and to like put, you know, face creams or serum. I mean, the older I get, there's a little bit more serums, but <laughs> it's, uh, you know, just taking that time, but 
to noticing when you do need help, like calling in, you know, a house cleaner, seeing when the laundry gets piled up. For me, it was like my office and my emails were answered and my projects were, you know, being delivered on time. But then I would come home and my house was like a complete disaster. My kids are little, so they couldn't, you know, they can't handle the lion's share of the cleaning. But then it was like, all right, well, I guess I better pull an all-nighter so I can make sure my house is spick and span, yeah. um, you know, and meal prep for the week. But I'm burning very quickly, like the candle on both ends. And yeah. there's times too um, that I was driving from work to get my kids from daycare. And I literally like fell asleep at the wheel and like woke up like in the median and was like, I'm exhausted, but then also let me stop and get some more Red Bull because yeah. that will clearly solve everything. Um, but even for me with burnout, I think to distract myself, there was a lot of shopping. There was the material markers of success. Um, at the time it was, you know, over exercising. So I would get that kind of adrenaline rush yeah. and that high, and it would mm -hmm. bypass whatever I was feeling. Yeah. Um, there was looking around and seeing like, okay, as a single mom, I have the car, I have the house, I have my kids in the daycare that they need to be in. They're wearing the clothes that they need to be. And I was still unfulfilled. And that yeah. was, I think the biggest, um, like marker of like things aren't right because I'm doing yeah. all the things that I'm supposed to. And I have all the things that I'm supposed to, but I still feel like so unfulfilled. And I feel like I'm still not measuring up to what society thinks that I should measure up yeah. to. Um, but I think too, realizing that burnout stems because we're not fulfilled with ourselves and finding yeah. that connection with ourselves. Um, right. But also in order to do that, like we do kind of have to take a step back. And I think for a lot of women too, in burnout situations, we have a huge lack of boundaries. And, you know, because we do have kids like, oh, well, you know, you left early to go to your kid's soccer game or whatever. Do you think you can finish this on the weekend? And, right. you know, of course, yeah, I'll have it on your desk, like before you even wake up on Saturday. And that was just like my need to drive. But also that's a huge lack of boundaries. Like I'm yeah. a mother first, I'm not a coworker. Um, and I think some people take that for granted. I think too, yeah. especially with us always being connected with, or, with our phones, um, we're expected to answer those emails. We're expected to pick up the phone at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. Um, and that's our sacred time. It's our sacred space. We're not at the office. Um, yeah. you know, so I think first and foremost, like where, where are you feeling this lack, this emptiness and like, yeah. where do you need to create boundaries to create that sacred space to connect back with yourself. Um, yeah. and as woo as it sounds, I think it's so crucial. And I think it's something that all women really do need to nurture, right? Um, yeah. regardless if you're in the corporate world or your mother, just as a woman, we need to nurture that sacred space. Yeah. Um, but I think we forget that along the way because we're so busy with all of the things. Yeah. I also found that, you know, by, by talking to a lot of different moms that, that go to work and they have other things and other responsibilities to attend to, they feel actually guilty. They feel guilty taking time out for themselves and doing things that they need to for themselves. Yeah. And, you know, that self-love, that self-care, trying to recharge yourself and, and create those borders. And, you know, they feel guilty. Like, you know, they put themselves last on the list and yeah. any, anytime they do something for themselves, there's a, a, a large amount of guilt they feel and they feel, and they totally forget themselves. And I think that's when you start to see the burnout, you know, and you can yeah. just tell like some, I can just see sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll see somebody, I could tell they're going through burnout just by their appearance, their yeah. skin color, you know, maybe, you know, the way their hair is or the way they're dressing or that, you know, they put weight on, you know, and sometimes you see people when they go through stress, they, they start to gray a lot, a lot quicker, you know, yeah. it all shows physically. And so it, it affects your mental health and it affects your physical health. And they say 70% of illnesses are caused by stress and that's scary. And yeah. so you think about burnout, how, burnout is such a huge issue in the United States and all over and many and many parts of the world as well, you know, how this is affecting people, you know, mentally, physically, spiritually, you know, at work in their, in their private lives, you know, and it's, it's something that has to be, you know, has to be taken care of, you know, and what are some suggestions that you feel are, are good suggestions for people who, you know, first they need to get over that guilt and not, you know, and what are some things that people need to realize, you know, when, when they're suffering from burnout? Yeah. I think, um, as a mother, 
there was a huge amount of time where you could not tell where my kids start and stopped and I started and stopped. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think they're, especially being a single mom for really most of their lives. Um, there came a point of like, if I need to go to the gym and release whatever stress is happening in a healthy way, not in like the overworking out way. Um, and just, you know, they were in daycare all day. Like I felt so much guilt of like taking them to the daycare at the gym, but also like, I do not have the mental bandwidth to do all of the things. And I do notice like my stress for me, you know, hiking on the mountain when they're little, they couldn't necessarily hike with me, but like just getting outside doing something, even if it was like 15 minutes, I need that time for me. And even sometimes I will say, because not everyone has the time or even the money to go to the gym. Right. But like that drive from like the office to daycare or the office to home. And like, I don't have to listen to music. If I want to listen to music, that's great. If I want to listen to a podcast, if I want to listen to binaural beats, um, just taking that time and maybe like not speeding home, um, as awful as it sounds. And I think, you know, we struggle as women because we do feel that guilt. Like, well, you know, we have free time. So I do it all the time. If I'm, at home and I'm like, oh, well, do I want to, you know, veg and watch trash TV and not do anything? Or should I do the laundry or should I clean out the pantry? Like I've been wanting to, like, I feel like any amount of idle time should be time that's maximized. Right. And I think that's where, you know, no, I want to lay on the TV and I want to watch 90 day fiance. And I just want to be still because I've been moving, moving, moving. Our nervous systems are not meant to be in that state all of the time. Um, But I think to, to tell someone, you know, don't feel guilty for going to the gym that doesn't happen overnight. That's like a definite mindset that you have to realize your kids will not remember if they were at daycare or if they were at the gym daycare, your kids do not remember, you know, I think even with cooking coming from an Italian family, like there Mm -hmm. was a dinner that was cooked every single night on our table. My kids don't know if that came from a bag. They don't know if I heated up a pizza. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think they care. Like now they're a little picky and they'll ask for like dishes, but like, let's save that for something special. I don't have to go out every single night and have this, you know, immaculate, but also you look at, you know, the Instagrams and there's these moms, but it's also, that's, it's fake. That's a fake reality. They are not looking that fabulous and making those meals every single day. Um, and to give yourself grace, it's, it's weird because a couple of weeks ago we went on this trip and I kept saying like, give yourself grace, give yourself grace. Like the kids would talk about a problem or yeah. how they were stressed out. And then it just like clicked and I'm like, God, Shannon, give yourself grace, give yourself grace for the things that you're doing, for the yeah. business that you run, for the career that you have, for the children that you manage, because it's a lot. And, yeah. and to you add all of like the healing stuff that kind of come comes along with it. Yeah. Give yourself grace. It's okay. It's okay. Um, I think for all of those things, yeah. you know, and, and we just need to be better at doing that instead of being so critical. And I think as women, we definitely are very critical because that's how we're raised. You know, yeah. we judge the other girl's dress or the other girl's purse. And, you know, we're always very competitive and then yeah. we ultimately are competitive with ourselves Right. And I think, you know, like you mentioned earlier, like social media plays such a a fake imitation role and people actually take a lot of these things to heart and they think it's serious. So like, you know, you have that, 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 that cook and that mom who's making these fabulous, you know, dinners and, and her hair is perfect and her makeup is on perfect and everything looks great. But it's not realistically, it's not like that. You know, you have a mom who, you know, either if she's a stay at home mom or even if she's at work either or they're going to, they're, you know, they're doing things all day long. They're worn out. You know, they don't look like, you know, uh, you know, like this perfect idol, you know, chef in, in, in the kitchen, you know, or, or you see somebody and, and they look fabulous, you know, and their body structure looks fabulous. Everything looks perfect. Her hair is in place, you know, and they take these pictures and people think they look like that all the time, but then, you know, you'll see them the next day 
and they don't look anything. You wouldn't recognize them. You wouldn't recognize them. (laughs) You would have no idea who they are. Yeah. And I can't tell you how many times. And and you see that too with celebrities. Like you, they'll take pictures of celebrities when they're not in front of the camera and, you know, they're just walking on the street, you know, going to the store or something like that. You won't even recognize that person, Yeah. you know, and even being in the media field, you know, they worked on these people for three, four hours in the makeup room before they actually got in front of the camera. So of course they're going to look great, you know? Yeah. If I had somebody every day working three, four hours on me, I would look phenomenal, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> That's what I always tell my husband when we're trying to go out. I'm like, listen, this is like a multi-person task and I'm doing it on my own and I'm making yeah. magic happen. So just give me some space to uh-huh. finish doing what I need to do. It exactly. takes a whole team of people to make someone look this good. Yes, exactly. And, and the sad thing is, is that the younger generation takes this to heart and they think, you know, and then you'll see people on, 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 on social media media and they write these beautiful perfect stories about how wonderful their life is and and then other people get depressed you know because their life might not be going as well but you know the 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 more perfect it sounds the more untrue it is you know and because yeah. like, nobody's life is perfect we all have our ups and downs we all go through you know the good and the bad nobody has like a perfect lifestyle it's just you know th- there is no such word like yeah. I say the word perfect sometimes when I'm talking but honestly it shouldn't even be in the vocabulary because there's no such thing as perfect you know everybody yeah. has ups and downs whether it's with your spouse your partner you know relationships in your family everybody has something we all have stories to tell you know so life is not perfect so to believe these things is just is just you know it's pre- pretty much like reading a fiction book you know if you want yeah. to fantasy go on to facebook you know it's just you yeah know, these are things that you know that you can't take to heart it's all about how you feel and what you feel you need. And I'm sure, you know, when you were going through burnout, you know, how did you know? And how did you feel like, okay, I'm, I'm not headed in a good direction. I feel this way and I need to do something about it. Like, you know, how do you feel that inside you? You know, how, what were some of the things that were going on that you knew you were headed in the wrong direction? For me, it was, um, the lack of energy, I think, and just the lack of, I would, I would like to say without being, um, Facebook fake uh, for the most part, (laughs) I'm definitely like happy. Um, you know, I just, I find joy. I think there's a lesson and not a loss and almost everything. Um, and it was just this, it was waking up and just being exhausted. Like I could sleep for 18 hours and still not be able to get out of bed. Um, it was looking at stuff um, like the piles of laundry. And in my head, I'm like, well, I'll just order some more clothes. I don't even have to deal with that. Like that was honestly like the logical thinking. Yeah. Um, yeah. but you know, being with my kids, which is like one of the most joyous things that I could ever have in this timeline. Um, it was like, I just felt like I was going through the motions, you know what I mean? And it really did feel like groundhog day. It didn't feel like there was any movement on this timeline. It was just like, I was stuck and it was a rinse and repeat. And this rinse and repeat was just in dirty water. And it was just this inner knowing of like, this is not sustainable. Like I do not want to live my life like this. And, um, I did the first time that I suffered with it a lot. I went to the doctor um, for some cyst. Um, and they gave me, and I told them, um, you know, he asked about my stress level and I'm like, well, I'm, you know, a single mom, I'm holding the entire financial load for my two kids. I just got divorced and you know, things are great. It's dandy. And so he had prescribed me with an antidepressant and with Xanax. And he told me to take the Xanax with the glass of wine. And within two weeks I was in the hospital. Like I couldn't, I could not take a sip of water without violently throwing it up. And the doctor at the hospital. Cause I was like, it has to be this medicine. It's the only new thing. He was shocked. And he was like, have you ever taken antidepressants before? And I was like, no. And he's like, this is for someone who's had years of experience with it. And that's twice your size. And I was like, what the heck is yeah. this? Like what's going on? But it was just that, like, I'm desperate and I'm looking for anything to help. Um, yeah. because it's not, it's not sustainable. And, you know, I think, I love working. I think part of, you know, the spiritual path, um, you know, a lot of people, they go off on these exotic, you know, locations and retreats to find themselves as a working single mom. I can't leave for like two months to go figure out who I was. Um, And so it was really just out of like, 
there has to be something better than this. Like I can't imagine this being the rest of my life. Um, I, I just, I have too many beautiful things around me and too many beautiful people around me to feel this low and to not feel, you know, like my heart is going to explode every single day. Um, and that was really, I think the exhaustion, um, you know, staring at the computer screen and then being like, what the hell was I doing for the last 30 minutes or, you know, flipping through the TV stations, like nothing was satisfying me. It was just this complete loss of zest for life. Yeah. Um, And it shouldn't have been like that from the outside looking in. I'm sure it didn't look like that at all because that was very much, you know, if everything looks good, then everything should be good. It'll just fall into place. right? Right. Yeah. For sure. You know, I, I think, you know, so many people don't realize that you don't have to go to an, ex- you know, exotic, you know, retreat, or you don't have to go and, and spend a fortune on a vacation, you know, at, at a spiritual place, you know, you could do things in your own home. There yeah. are many times I've done so many practices in my own home and made some time. And, and a lot of times you, you, if you don't have a lot of time in between and you're busy, just take 15 minutes out of the day, you know, or, you know, maybe do something in the morning morning and maybe something right before you go to bed or when whatever your schedule's like just like stick it in little bits and pieces and you'll see a difference like is there things that you do or suggest to the listeners that they could do at home to help them renew themselves so they can start moving forward and they don't get stuck into that burnout or they don't progress in burnout yeah and i think the simplest thing um because we've probably all fallen victim to like yeah. oh buy this crystal it'll help buy this incense it'll help um and and they do right they have their own amazing powers um but for me because i was not about the woo for the longest time i didn't get it i didn't want to yeah. smell like patchouli i didn't understand what they were <laughs> saying but like now looking back and like seeing what brings us kind of back to that sacred place was just stopping and connecting with my breath and like feeling this breath travel from like the top of my spine back through my skull all the way down Mm -hmm. right and like to my whole body and then as I kind of grew in my spiritual practice um I would connect with you know this light that was above um and then bring it all the way down and then I would anchor it into like this crystalline network um but to start just to take a minute when I could feel myself getting overwhelmed because there's, you know, a hundred emails that just came in in the last hour. There's, you know, something that was delayed with, you know, a vendor at work or whatever it was, just taking a minute and just kind of closing my eyes and focusing on that breath, picturing that breath, just going through my body and bringing that energy down. Um, Because you don't need to believe in woo to know that if you breathe and you focus on it, it does calm your nervous system down. Um, And that was, I think too, now, working with my daughter and when I can see her getting anxious and excited and the same with my son, like, look at me, let's just focus on these breaths. Um, you know, you don't need any magic for that. It's just, yeah. it's your mindset. Um, but I think the first part of that is knowing when you feel yourself getting that anxiety and like you, yeah. you know, for me, like the little alert on my Apple watch would like blow up and like your heart rate's jacked. And I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah. Like, what do you, you know, what do you do? Um, but I think it was just, it's, the mindset of knowing that it's okay. Again, giving yourself grace, right? Like, yeah, yeah, I'm overwhelmed. I have in-laws coming into town. I have, you know, dinner that I'm supposed to cook for Easter. I need to get to the mall to get a prom dress for my daughter. And I still have to, you know, be at this meeting. It's giving yourself grace. Like, yeah, I feel overwhelmed. I'm a little bit stressed. Um, And I think too, as you get more comfortable with that and being able to communicate it to those around you, Mm -hmm. um, that in itself is magic. Like being able to tell the kids like, Hey, (laughs) today was a day. Just give me like 10 minutes to be quiet in my bedroom. I'll deal with whatever you have. Give me 10 minutes. But like, you know, setting those boundaries, I think, and then people respect it. And then they, you know, engage with you differently because they do know that you're doing hard things or, you know, something's going on. Right. I think that's so important. And I love the fact that you brought up breathing because it's so important. I even remember like my, my aunt used to get panic attacks. And when I was with her, when she would get them, I would just slow her breathing down. I would just calm her down just by slowing her breathing down. And she would get out of the attack just by 
just slowing her breathing down, concentrating on her breathing, just clearing her mind and it would go away. And people don't realize my breathing is so powerful and you could do it anywhere. Like, you know, you could even be in the car and yeah. you, could, you could just, you know, there are techniques. They have one where you could just close one nose, breathe in, you know, and just slow your breathing down. And then you could close the other nostril and you can yeah. do the same thing. Little simple things like that. People don't realize can make a huge impact, you know, and even being at home, like you said, and just taking a little time to do different breathing exercises because there's so many different types, you yeah. know could really change a person and calm them instead of like going to get Xanax, you know, try different breathing exercises and, you know, try different methods that are actually natural that actually have, you know, the same effect. Well, and it sustains your success, right? Because yeah. you can't always pretty soon you're like, you know, popping the Xanax probably more than what you're supposed to because you're yeah. still anxious. And two, um, over the course of going through trying to get my back better and then ultimately getting surgery, like when you're stressed and you're anxious, all of the pain receptors just open right yeah. up and it floods your body. So it's like every little ache and pain is like tenfold, right? And yeah. like, you know, when I was going through this a couple years ago, like, I swear I was dying every day. I mean, my back was an issue. Yes, but it was every single ache and pain. I just noticed like times a hundred and it was because yeah. I was so anxious. Um, but then to working with the hospital that I was working with, they're all about like mindfulness and how do you bring mindfulness in as like pain, like pain control essentially. Yeah. And that, I honestly, um, that did, more that had more benefit for me than any of like the epidurals or any of like the pain medication. I mean, at the point, at the point that I was in, like the pain pills did nothing other than make me sleep, which was lovely because I would pass out long enough to get some relief. Right. Yeah. Um, but like the breathing and bringing it down. Um, and I think to, you know, whatever your source is, if it's God, an angel, spirit guide, whatever, just connecting to that and bringing that down and that kind of like universal love and light, yeah. um, as cheesy as it sounds. But I think like, as you bring in the breathing practices and then start introducing these other elements and seeing how you respond to that. Um, and again, it's, it's mindset. If you think that something higher above you is coming in and it's going to fill your body with love, it yeah. will like, regardless of, you know, your, your spiritual or religious beliefs, it, yeah. it does work. It happens. It's, it's beautiful too. Yeah. Oh, I agree with you a hundred percent. And people, you know, when I talk to people and they're skeptic about it, I say, well, you know, the whole world is run by energy. If there was no yeah. energy, there would be no world. So let's think about that for a second, you know, yeah. how powerful and how prevalent energy is in our world. It's everywhere. It makes the world you know, live, it makes the world work, you know, it's everywhere in your home, you know, if you were next to a negative person, do you ever feel like that your your energy is going to kind of suck down a little, that negative person is actually sucking your positive energy. That's how powerful energy is from person to person, from place to place, from tree to tree, it's just all over the place. And if you think yeah. about it in that sense, if we're able to open ourselves to other energies and positive energies, if we're able to connect with whoever our, our higher sources, you know, a lot of great things could happen. You know, you're, yeah. if you're a positive person and you're thinking positive and you're asking for positive energies, you know, those positive energies will come, you know, and for people who are, you know, skeptical about that, you know, I, I know a lot of people that could be, that are skeptical about that, but that yet they believe in the law of attraction. I'm like, well, if you believe in the law of attraction, yeah. you know, think about it for a second, you know, positive energy brings positive people. What does the law of attraction say? You know what I mean? So yeah. it's kind of like, you know, you can and that's, I think too, when you reframe it, when you give someone, um, a perspective that's just slightly to the side of what they're used to looking down. Right. Yeah. Um, and then you can frame it like, and connect these things to like science. Right. And like, yeah. you know, not the new age, but like, you know, knowledge that people a millennia before us knew yeah. and understood intricately. Um, I think it just, it, helps them just shift the frame slightly and then they see yeah. it differently and it makes sense. It's like turning the puzzle piece enough so it finally fits in. Yeah. Um, and I think that's probably, I don't want to say half the battle, but I think working with people and introducing stuff like breath or bringing in, yeah. you know, your higher self, when you just change it, we can interchange 
spirit guides and angels all day long. Like right. no one's arguing that there is something up there watching yeah. out for us, giving us messages. Um, you know, we can fight about the details on what you want to call it later. <laughs> Let's just, you know, get to the good stuff. Um, yeah. but I love when people see that, like, it's like that aha moment of like, mm -hmm. oh, that makes sense. I get that. Like the energy, you know, energy created this universe. It would not be here without energy. The, you know, the effects of sound bowls on our body because our body is primarily water and you look at how right. it affects water, you know, anywhere else, how does it not affect us? And exactly. I love um, just seeing the connection into just the technology now where people can provide that data yeah. um, where it kind of like, you know, it's not it's not all woo. There's a lot of science intertwined. Yeah. It's not new age. It's been here forever. Um, and hopefully like we keep moving forward like that. I think we need it for sure. Yeah. And, and, and people, if they really do their history, like holistic living and, and, and breathing and, and different plants and, and usage of a lot of different things have, you know, started thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. So this is nothing new. This is all stuff that has been here for a long time, you know, so it's, it's just learning and investigating. Like you said, you know, if you look back, it'll, most of this stuff pretty much is all science back based information. So yeah. it's not something that you just pulled out of a hat, you know, science can back it up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think it's important for, um, just the new wave of healers and coaches and all of the people, like when you kind of intertwine the spirituality with the science, um, the effects of that, I think are more profound than like any prescription that we could ever, and most prescriptions are based off of something that is in nature, yeah. right? It's yeah. the chemistry. It's just, um, people can make more money probably selling it through big pharma than us going and forging. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's just, um, I think it's important to remember, like, I guess our roots, right? Like where we came yeah. from and how this all started. Um, exactly. And I grew up like hardcore in the church. So mm -hmm. um, I definitely, I think the science aspect was like really what kind of like turned me and brought me <laughs> to the other side because yeah. it's not it's not witchcraft. It's not crazy, you know, stuff. It's, it's right. real and it works. I think of the pro pro part of the problem is the lack of education. I think yeah. if people knew more knowledge and they, they really dive deeper into it, they would understand more because, you know, a lot of times it's people reject things because they fear it because they don't understand it. And that's, that's a big problem. I think, you know, in yeah. this. no agreed. And two, I mean, like being raised in the church, it's very, it was a huge no, no, like that is witchcraft. Yeah. Like, no, there are not spirits. No, you cannot talk to anything that's outside of a priest. Like it was, was just um and our church was specifically very strict like hugely yeah. there is black and white and there is no gray area um so it was almost like risky for me to even kind of be curious about that whole other side yeah. um you know and I I was I was very adamant in my faith and going to church but there was just something else that there was something else calling me um yeah. you know and I think to being I think being raised in Arizona and being surrounded by like these ancient cultures and like, you know, the mountain that was in our backyard, like had all these petroglyphs and there's like definitely these carvings of like things that look like aliens and then the people yeah. and the goats. And then there's like, you know, these 10 foot men or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it was always kind of like this thought of like, well, what did they see? Because I don't think yeah. they made it up. You know what I mean? Right. So it was always exactly. kind of this curiosity, like the seeds were planted at a very young age. Yeah. I think, I think, you know, I felt the same way growing up, you know, the same, same thing. And, uh, I, I personally, I, I am a very spiritual person and I've seen, you know, it's, it's helped me tremendously, you know, open my eyes up to a different, you know, a broader sense of, of life and, and a, a different way of thinking, you know, I think yeah. it's important sometimes to get out of that gray box, you know, or, you know, just, you know, or even dab into outside just a little bit, don't be afraid, you know, and if you don't like it, jump back in the green box, in the gray box, but try yeah. it, you know what I mean? And, and see, you know, and, uh, I think that is a, you know, a, 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 it's, it's very helpful. It's very common. It's very, you know, I, spirituality has, has kind of released a lot of that black cloud from me, you know, and it's made yeah. me really, uh, look at life differently and feel differently, feel a lot lighter, if that makes sense to you, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I, I was able to really focus on life and with a different pair of eyes, you know, and people say, Oh, you're always smiling because I, 
inside I feel happy, you know, and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's like you sometimes walk by people and you could see that they're not happy, you know, and that's not yeah. how you live life. So it's like, you know, sometimes you have to do, not worry about what everybody else around you is doing or what you've been taught, but you need to do what you feel makes is going to make you happy. And I think that too, people have to figure out who they are, you know, without all these labelisms as a professional, without a, being that mom label, without being, you know, the wife or husband label or the partner label, take all that away. What do you have? And, and, you know, I've said that to people and they just stared at me with a blank face because after all those labels were taken away, they didn't know really who they were, you know, because yeah. they, they spent their whole life in this circuit. And now if you take all those things away, they don't really know who they are as a person. I love that you said that. I just got chills everywhere. Um, there was someone that I studied under who just had like immense wisdom. I mean, f years and years beyond where they should have been. And at the time, I didn't really understand. But the point essentially was like, well, if your kids were taken away, like, let's just say that there's a car accident and you no longer had your kids, you no longer had your job. Like, who are you really? Because you're not, I mean, yes, you are a mother, but like, you're not, that's not what makes you, you. And at first I was like, oh my gosh, like, why are you talking about my kids getting in a car accident? But yeah. also like very true. And I need to be, the point of the lesson was I need to be so happy with myself that even if God forbid I did lose my kids that I would still go on shining my light and I would still go on spreading love despite wow. them no longer being with me in this timeline. Right. Yeah. And so it's hard to explain to some people because they're very programmed, right? Like, yeah. no, you are your car, you are your house, you are your job you are, you know, your spousal status, whatever. But if you take all of those things away, would you still genuinely, truly be happy? Yeah. Um, and, and that's where you really have to go in. And I think too, even going in and looking at the parts of yourself that like weren't so pretty and the times that like, it really was in a dark place and like loving that and loving like all of these scars, yeah. um, which I say a lot and my kids and I, before we ever met my husband, um, you know, we're perfectly imperfect. Like all mm -hmm. of these imperfections is what makes us beautiful. And yeah. like, you know, now looking at some of like the really bad relationships and childhood trauma, like I'm at a place now where I can say thank you because I yeah. know how strong I am and I know what I'm capable of doing. And now I'm like finding my stride because I don't have any of that BS to deal with. Yeah. Um, I know how to get through like the burnout portions of, you know, managing being a mom and a wife and all of the things. And like, I can, it's like go time. Right. Yeah. Um, so thank you for showing me exactly how tough, because I know you thought that you were going to take me down and I wasn't going to be able to pick myself back up, but yep. surprise. Yeah. <laughs> and I think people have to realize that, that we are stronger than we give ourselves credit, because I think yeah. that's the biggest problem is that people, after you've been knocked down so many times, your self-esteem and your self-worth gets knocked down with it. And then you have to kind of rebuild it. And the problem is, is that people don't know how to rebuild it, or they don't think they're worthy enough to yeah. you know, be, be that person they dreamt to be in or, or once was, or, you know, and I, you know, it, it all has to, you have to kind of just work on yourself and, and, you know, and if you believe in yourself and you, and you work on your self-esteem, you can get through it. You can get through yeah. everything. It doesn't matter how many times you've got knocked down. If you work on your strength, you know, I always say faith, courage, wisdom, strength, and hope, and, and all those things put together will get you through life, you know, and just being positive and just having positivity in your life and, and, and loving yourself, loving who you are and figuring out who you are, you know, and, and who is that person. And once you figured out all those things, I think no matter how big the problem you can get through it, because if you think about it in life, every problem that happened to you, don't you feel like you, you overcame it when you're in it? It felt like a, a, a horrible crisis, but then oh my God. yes. Like it, it was literally, there was days where I'm like, I can't survive another day. Like I cannot do this anymore. Like, and then the next day would come and I would feel probably the same way. And then the next day, and then pretty soon I'm like a couple weeks out and I'm like starting to get my footing again. Um, and I survived and it's, yeah. you know, you, you survive all of your worst days. Sometimes you don't feel like you can or yeah. like you should, but, um, I think that's too, that's, that's so much inner strength. And I don't think that enough people give themselves credit for yeah. getting through 
those moments where, because it would take a lot of people down. I know yeah. some of the things that I've been through, I know 110%, a lot of people could not survive that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I am amazed in myself and I think more women, more men, more children should be amazed in themselves and what they do. Like just the yeah. small day-to-day things, like be amazed at what you are capable of doing. And then when yeah. the really big stuff happens, be even more amazed, <laughs> be astonished, exactly. like all of the things, like be your best, you know, fan club. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, and, and if you are your best fan club, you'll get through it. You know, you, you're, you don't need someone to root for you, root for yourself, you know? Yeah. And, and learn how to do that. And, and if you believe in yourself, you could get through it. You know, you have to just believe in yourself and, you know, it will get you through anything. I think. Yeah. If you had, if you had to emphasize everything we talked about today, what are some of the prime things you'd like to really, you know, make the audience realize? Um, you know, as soon as you said that it was like, I knew where you were going with it. And for some reason, uh, giving yourself grace just keeps kind of bouncing back and forth in my head. Yeah. Um, you know, give yourself credit for still getting out of bed and getting dressed, give yourself credit and grace for getting your kids to school, for getting into the office that sometimes we like absolutely dread going to, you know what I mean? Even yeah. giving yourself grace that like you are in a position where you have a job, despite what it is and the capacity exactly. that it takes to be there, you made that. And I think we are looking for like these huge markers of success, you know, yeah. like, oh, we need to like be a billionaire or whatever, like every single day is such a huge accomplishment. And I think that we don't give ourselves enough grace to just see the power and the beauty and the strength within that. Um, I think we're, we're just hard on ourselves Yeah, we shouldn't be because we do amazing things. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Now tell everybody some of the different services that you provide. Yeah. Um, so I do distance, uh, Reiki and sound baths. Um, if you're local to the Nashville area, um, we host workshops and half day retreats here. Um, I've been blessed to integrate with some amazing women that are holistic practitioners. And so kind of that co-creating, um, space has been just really, I think beautiful because it's a different dynamic. I think it's new to the city. Um, and I also do one-on-one -on -one work for women that are suffering from burnout, um, and really, in that container, we just go through each of our power sources um, and our chakra system, but kind mm -hmm. of just embody, like what is the woman that you want to embody and how do we strip away all of this armor that's kind of taken a beating over the yeah. course of our lives and rebuild it with something beautiful and luminous and um, something that just empowers you and has your you know most powerful presence at, at the foundation of it. Um, right. and, and really it's just all about kind of that holistic success instead of looking for these outside, um, you know, again, markers of, of success. Right. Right. Now, how can people get in touch with you? Um, they can go to my website. It's modern Um, and hippie is spelled H I P P I E. My kids came up with that name. And so we're sticking <laughs> with it. I love it. I love it. And is there anything that you give away on your site or do you have any specials on your site? Yeah. Um, so if you go to my website, there is a workbook that you can download um, that focuses on the sacral chakra and how to kind of harness that power um, for women, especially that's really kind of, that's where we literally create. Um, and so that's a huge power source for us. Um, and so you can download that for free by signing up on my website. Awesome. This has been amazing. Oh my gosh, Shannon, thank you so much for coming on the show. This thank has you been for amazing. having me. I love I, it. I love talking to you. I could talk to you for like hours. I know. I feel the same way. I, you know, everything you do is great. And I, I think it's so important what you're doing. I think all the information you gave today was wonderful because there's more than just popping a pill. There are so many yeah. ways to, to heal ourselves naturally. And there are so many ways to connect with ourselves and to be able to love ourselves and also learn to that if we love ourselves we shouldn't we should really focus on understanding our body and how it works because i think the more connected we are spiritually the more we understand our bodies and then we can pick up when we're not, something's a little off and save yeah. ourselves from falling into that burnout because you know 
I, you know, it took me a long time, but I realized, you know what, if I don't get it done today, I'll get it done tomorrow. And I can't, you know, I say it with ease right now, but it took a long time for me to, to get to that point because I was always the person to start something. And once I started, I was like determined to finish. It was like, you know, and I overworked myself so many times and burnt myself out so many times. And you can't excel in life and you can't be the person you want to be if you're constantly doing too much and burning yourself out. You can't yep. be the great mom. You can't be the great professional. You can't be the great partner. You can't, you know, you can't live up to your expectations if you consistently overdo and overdo. And I think one of the big, biggest things that we talked about today too, I think is, is don't feel embarrassed to ask for help and don't feel shameful uh, to give yourself some time for you, you know? Yeah. Um, I think those are great, you know, pieces of advice that you shared today on the show too. And I think people have to just live life and enjoy because who knows where we'll be tomorrow, you know? Yep. So let's not like, you know, everything that we work so hard for, we can't take with us. So, you know what? I think it's all about living life and enjoying each day and just making the most out of it because we never know where the next day might bring. So it's great about being happy and enjoying life. And I thank you so much for being on the show, Shannon. Thank you. Thank so you much. for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. And you have a great day. You do the same. <laughs> <laughs>